G'day viewers, welcome to another super helpful, super cool repair video from the Goat Shed located in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. So today is Wednesday, November 20, 2024. It's 20 degrees Celsius outside, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, Today we're going to be working on Gottlieb's dropper card from 1971. It was in fact made in November 71 and it was designed by Ed Krinsky with the artwork by Gordon Morrison. The machine made prior to this dropper card was Lawman and the machine succeeding it was Orbit. But when you look, there was a machine called, what was it called, Graham? Jump Shot. Jump Shot, or Sky Jump, or something called. No, no, jump Shot. Jump Shot. And when we looked that up on the IPDB, it appeared that actually it was an Adderball game and it didn't get produced. There was also another game called Wizard in there somewhere, so. It just goes to show they, you know, they designed a lot of games and maybe they, they thought they were going to produce them, but all of a sudden management said, no, no, no. Might no. have been too many relays in them. Yeah, too many relays. Take one out. We can't. Why not? The game won't, the game work. won't work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, of course, Dropper Card is a very, very popular game. Now, this particular Dropper Card we have here has three coin shoots in it. Now, mostly when they had three coin shoots, they were implied to be for German market. Uh, the Germans had three coin shoots. Uh, this machine's been modified something severely on the front door, around the plug for the front door, and we've got to sort that out because it currently won't start. We can get it to start by pushing in the start relay and it will reset and everything like that. I'll show you in a moment what's going on. But like always, we've had the machine on the bench, we've gone through everything, the back box has been done, play field's been done, new flipper kit, new pop bumper kit, kits in it I should say there's two pop bumpers on this game and um, we've checked all the relays and everything like that one thing we found when we had it on the bench was that the control bank a couple of the switches looked a bit funny and one of those switches was on the reset bank so what we did we decided to plug the the motorboard in on the bench and run it and see what happened. Well, it ran, but the motor would not stop. Now, what the problem was, was that there's a switch in the relay, uh, the, sorry, there's a switch in the control bank, which is the reset switch, had a really damaged switch stack. Now, I have that here uh, in my hand. I'm gonna show you that. This is one of those switches where it relies on an armature actuator to open and close it. If you look closely, this switch, the bottom one is normally open and the top one's normally closed. Now the top switch, so it sits in the game like this, that top switch is the motor run switch. But if you look closely, this is really badly bent all down here. Someone's done a job on it. Someone's done a real job on it, yeah. We, we've straightened it up a lot compared, but we decided to change that because if you watch carefully, you watch, get it in focus, as I break that top switch, the bottom one closes, they're touching together. Oh, a bit hard to show, there. So they're still touching. So the problem was that the motor wouldn't stop. So we've, we've replaced that stack out of another stack and, and well repaired that at our leisure and put it back in that spare part we had. Now, that's okay. Once we got that going, we were happy with that. We put the motorboard back in the game and it wouldn't start. Okay. We had a look and we saw all these modifications. Now, I'm going to endeavour to show you those. Just bear with me. 
So here's the front door, and we can see where a lot of wires have been been removed here and here. The wires have been removed from the slam switch, and this is your brown and orange wire here for your front door. But look, they've they've joined wires everywhere and one hell of a mess come down here and we can see so there's a brown jump wire they've put on there we don't know why not sure we can't figure that out oh, the safer free play. there's another wire here a green wire which is a coin switch wire has been taken off this one here's been disconnected yeah that, that. And, and the hack's been put in which we trace back to um the second coin relay, second shoot relay. So that, that colour wire there, where is it? There. That wire there. It goes through the harness. Goes through and comes all the way back to the W is. relay. And there it is there. And that's it there. And we're not sure what they've tried to achieve there. Now if you have a look, there's no, um, no chimes. The holes there for them. Now a lot of machines in Germany, I mean, I can't say it too often with Gottlieb games, but they just, they, yeah. they took the chimes out for some reason. Billy and Williams were a shocker. Yeah, for some, there was a reason for it. I, I just, well, I, think, some, I think, Kim, because they were in cafes and restaurants and such, and they didn't noise, want noise. Yeah. The other problem we had was the tilt relay in the control bank. That wire there. That wire there. The black wire. The black wire there. That was disconnected for some reason. So we, we reconnected that back up, and it works okay. And we put a new power cord on it too. Oh, the fuse was missing. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Now, that was the other really weird and bizarre thing. That that fuse block up the back was totally missing. That one there. Mm. So it, the wire was just joined together. Now, that's not only unsafe... It's just not good practice. Yeah. Just point to that fuse block. So we replaced that yeah, it's a bit when we put the new power cord on. Yeah. So that's the fuse block there. The, uh, it's got a 5 amp slow blow on it. Mm. So, um, yeah. That's where we're up to so far. And like I said, we know the game actually works. And bear in mind... Uh, this is the one where we had a really filthy motorboard. We posted a picture of it on our um, our Facebook page, and so we're sanded that. We've sanded it down and um, and relacquered it. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Even the squall motor, which Spanky stand on, get off there, goat. Mm. That was very rusty. Like it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than what it was. There's a lot of rust in this, so it's clearly lived by the seaside. Oh, he's had a couple of views. Yes, had a few this morning. Yeah, clearly lived by the seaside. The ball count unit cleaned up reasonably well, but it's a bit rusty on the other mm. on the other side. I didn't worry too much about that. Yeah, it's not a restoration. Yeah, no, that's right. Like Graham said, it's not a restoration. So, that's well... Where, uh, that's where the chimes have been. Were over there. <laughs> yeah. Now, the chimes may have been in this, and someone just may have taken them out, but they're not there now, that's for sure. When they were there, they'll know it in. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go. Right here. Okay, so we've got a little bit more work to do. We're going to go and rewire... We'll wire this up so we can start again. All right, so now we've tidied up all that wiring on the slam switch and the replay button. Fixed it all up around here, got rid of all those other wires that we didn't need. So that's all nice and fixed up now. Now what we should be able to do is start the game. So let's have a little look. Up we go. Let's press the replay button. Beautiful, it starts. Okay, so that's one thing we've now achieved. So what we'll do, we'll just go around the back and operate those um, relays to make sure the score rolls are turning over. Just one step of the ball count unit, which we just that's did. Done. So we're in like a ball in play. Okay, let's go and see what's happening now. Look at that carried over. 
Excellent. Beautiful. All right. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to fit the play field into the game. That'll be the next job. And we'll see, does everything work? <clears throat> so let's get on with that. No, you won't tell you what I've done with it. All right, so now we've got the play field back in. It's all lit up. And we've still got to put the top arch back in there. And we've got one other problem. We've got a broken screw up yeah. there. So we've got to fix that up and before we put that plastic back on. Yeah. All right, so let's start the game up now and we'll see what, what sort of happens. Hopefully should all reset again. Oh, we're still in game, so we'll turn it off and back on. Oh, there you go. There you go. Put the on. All searching. Right. Ball's playing up a bit. We've got a bit of a problem with the ball kicking out. So we're going to have a look at that and see what's going on. We'll take the apron off in a minute and have a look. All right, so um, let's roll over. There's 100 points lit up there. Let's roll over and see what happens. We've got 100 points. Okay, great. Now what's, 10. It, what's it worth 10 when it's not lit, is it? Yep. Okay. And the alternate off these bumpers here, the uh, rollovers. Oh yeah, so the little um, star rollovers alternate things. So only, only the lit one. Only the lit one, yep. There you go, it changes. Hope it's 100 points here, 100 points here. Okay. So, all right, so, so what the idea of this is to get all the drop targets down, so Graham will just knock all those down. Sequentially, they're worth 50 points each. And, okay. Um, and they all work perfect, like sometimes when you put it back together, some stick a little bit, but these are working good. Yeah, they're working good. Okay. Knock these, rest of them down. Oh, also when you get out the top drop targets, they get out the side lanes of 500. Oh, okay, they're, they're alight now, both of them. Yep. Left targets like that lane for 500, and the bumper as well for 100 instead of 10. Right, okay. All right, now... um. Just one minute, let's see what else is going on. All right. All right. So we're going pretty good at the moment. All right, so we've just got to get these three drop targets down, seven, eight, and nine, and that should light special for us. But it hasn't. Okay. Now that's not right, something's wrong there. And if we operate one of these to alternate, we can hear that buzz, that would be the alternator relay, we'll have to have a look at that, the armature plate might need flapping. Yeah, it's not sitting flat. So we'll address that, because they are very, very annoying, just to get rid of that, we'll touch that and that'll go away. Now, we haven't got the dropper card schematic on paper, but we do have an electronic version of that. So. We've just looked that up, and I can tell you the problem will be the sequence completed relay on the control bank, and that'll be the two through nine sequence completed relay. And there's a normally closed switch on that relay with a yellow and black, yellow plus black wire on it. Now, I would dare say that that's the problem. Uh, the pop bumpers are lit by the left one by this bank and the right one by this bank. So we'll have a look now and just check that relay and check that normally closed switch and see what the yeah. what it looks like. And uh, because we know everything that has happened should happen because of what have we got down, so in other words, getting down these drop targets like that and the bumper, other side the same. And these drop targets up here like the 500, so we know, we know everything on the drop targets working, so it's got to be a series completed relay. So that's like saying, um, know your game and, yeah. you know, it can help you diagnose the fault. Yeah, so it's pretty well can only be that um, associated with that relay. All right, well, let's look. Okay, so here it is. It was this, like the schematic told us, it was this switch here with the yellow and black wire on. It's a normally closed switch. 
it just wasn't quite touching good enough. Mm. And now, if we have a look, we should have, there it is, there's one of the special lights on. Yeah, up the top, we can alternate it as well, so we should be able to get that one on. Should be able to. There there's that one on, and there's that horrible buzzing relay. Yep. That horrible buzzing relay will be that one down there. That one there, you can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it vibrating. It's so vibrating this one. We'll pull that apart. We haven't got the flippers in this game yet. We we broke a screw in the flipper shaft, and we've got to um, we've got to dig one out. Of the got to dig one out of the parts parts drawer. So I think what we'll do now, we'll address two things. We'll address that noisy relay, and this, and we'll address this ball not kicking out very well. Um, so let's uh, do that. So here's the problem, more than likely with the alternating relay. This armature plate is sort of a bit ordinary gouged in so what we're going to have to do we're going to have to take the switch stacks off and take that armature plate out and use the dremel flubbing tool and, and give it a and if we're not happy we'll just replace it good clean it should come up okay yeah yeah all right let's do that all right there's the armature out played out of the game that's the side that hits the coil so we'll get the dremel tool and that's called a flapping tool. That's the one we use. And we'll clean that up. Now the, the relay frame, <coughs> just a bit rusty. Remember this machine is obviously lived by the seaside because it's all full of rust. And you look at that, and that needs a bit of a clean up as well, where you probably turn it around and it looks brand new. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So I'll get the flapping tool onto that and we'll show you how, how that comes up. All right, well, there's the results of using that flapping tool. As you see, it smoothed it right out, gave it a bit of a polish with them with a 443, and we've cleaned this, this up as well. That's not as dirty and grotty as it was. It'll move a bit better. Even polished the top a little bit so you can read the word Gottlieb now. So those flapping tools with the Dremel are very, very handy. Uh, we've pointed this out before, but we use the Dremel 8220. That's a cordless Dremel. We, we used to have one with a cord, a power one, but we sort of wore that out over the years. Plus it was, wasn't wasn't uh, real good to use anyway. It's, yeah, this is easier to you, handle. You can take it out of the machine and everything. Yeah. So let's put this back in and see how we go. Okay, one more problem solved. Look at that. No noise at all. No noise at all. Just the way they should be. So as you can see, the reason that was occurring was the fact that the the armature plate wasn't hitting the coil squarely yep. um, and allowing not, not to sit right and allowing it to vibrate. Well, now you can hardly even feel it vibrate. Yeah, you could put your finger on it before and it was vibrating. Mm. So we'll put that in the game. Then um, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll put the clip in and away we go. And then we'll troubleshoot the ball kicking out from the from yeah. the hole. So what we're going to do now is. Um, see why that um, we'll take the apron off and have a look at that so it just goes to show us that whenever you get that it is a, a good method to use and it, and it does work and especially on older relays when they, they make a hell of, hell of a noise sometimes yeah hold an alternating relays because that one's got what it's got one two three it's got five switch stacks mm. on it and they're all make break and the trouble is because they can be held on for so long they it's just the noise when you play it yeah it does get annoying all right So with the ball kick out problem, what we found was that the spring on the actual ball kicker assembly was a bit weak. I've got it here, I'll show you. So it had slight damage there as you can see. I think someone's mucked around with this because it's a bit funny on one end. So we changed that over and that made the world a difference. Um, so if we do it now, you'll see it kick the ball out quite well. Let's just do a reset. There it goes. Course it's sliding down on the left too. Yeah, so yeah. Once, our, once the proper legs are on, it's going to be okay. That's all right. Now we're up to ball three. So it's 
So bore four. Now something we. Right, we're going to bore five, and it should go. Into... Right. Now notice something. That stayed on ball five, and the machine is cut out. Game over. It's game over because it's come up with a match number, but we haven't got the game over light. And the ball light's still on. And the ball light. light's still on, so that light should be on and that light should be off. Right, as I mentioned earlier, we haven't got the schematic for this, but we just had a look. And there's a, a wire on there. What colour did I say? Um, was it red? Um, it'd yellow, be on the game over yellow, relay. Yellow blue, wasn't it? Yeah, yellow blue, I think it was, which is the XB relay. There's There'll be a make break switch on there, and there'll be something wrong with that. That switch won't be breaking to turn that light off mm. and to turn that light on. So. so let's just have a very quick look at that and see what we can see. We'll show you the switch. So there's the offending switch there. The game over relay has pulled in, but that switch hasn't broken, so we just need to do a bit of an adjustment on it. You can see it's sitting a bit way back from the mm. actu actuator. Let's adjust that switch and see what comes of that. Alrighty, so we're on ball one, we've scored a few points, and let's just, we're going to operate the, um, now we'll just operate the uh, trough switch. Okay, we're on ball five. Over. And game over. So we've adjusted that switch so it it opened up the actual. It was just a bit far from the actuator, mm. and that's fixed that. Easy two minute fix. Yeah, very simple fix. Now, one other thing we found during the course of our repairs, we had a burnt out. All of a sudden, the game started going into tilt. Well, there's the reason. That's the hold relay, and it actually you can see that was broken away there and when we pulled it out so it had had it. Um, it also, probably, must have measured alright when we had it in the game but as soon as it got hot it obviously went bad. Mm. So um, 9738 coil measures out at about 33 ohms I think it is from memory. Um, so we have some mm. of them in stock here and we're good to go. Now the thing we've got to do with this machine now is simply fit the flippers back into it and the cranks and just do a, a, a bit more of further testing and this post here we've got I'm gonna I think I'm gonna um, try to get it out and I might put a, a bolt straight forward and a, and a T nut oh okay it's gonna be the way to go well, I'm just trying to get those LED lights they are a pain we okay all right so um, let's fit the flippers now and then we'll be able to play a bit of a game okay so we've reassembled the machine, we've got the apron back on, it's a shame really could have done with a new sticker but needless to say, don't think the guy wanted to spend an awful lot of money. Spanky's just casting his eye over the game now, he's up the top there having a little look, we're all pretty happy with it now. Everything seems to work okay, all the features and functions work, specials, drop targets restore nicely. There's not really much else we can do now. Um, oh, we've just still got to fix this up here. That'll be a supplementary job. A screw broke off right there. Hang on. See where that broke off just near my knuckle there? So we've got to get that out and fix that up. So as I mentioned, just a little bit more cosmetic things to fix, like that bit I just pointed out with the broken screw. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to put the wire forms below the flippers. Yeah, we haven't put them in there yet. Yeah, top arch needs to be painted top, yet. Top arch has got to be painted. But look, other than that, I think we're largely happy with this game. Um, yeah. As I said, we'll test it a little bit more. Uh, our next project coming up will be a Jungle Queen we've got out the back there. We don't see many of them, do we? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always pleasant to see a Wedgehead game. Anyway, if you've watched the video this far, we hope you enjoyed it. And it was informative and gave you some ideas on how to fix your pinball machines. Please consider subscribing to our channel. And if you're so kind, you can give us a super thanks by sending us a buck or two. Every little bit helps. 
Spanky, we have to feed him he, he, and drink. He drinks too much. We've got to supply his alcohol, etc. Anyway, without further ado, this has been another Goat Shed presentation.